All right, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. At Small Arms Danny. At Trey Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susack. <laughs> Brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com. What's good? What's good? How we doing, fellas? Good. I'm feeling good. good. Not small. Not yeah. small. Hey, Cole, yes. you're becoming a TikTok star, bro. <laughs> Dude. We just cont- we're on TikTok Live. We're going to talk to one of the rising stars yeah. on TikTok you, right now. You know what? I've what, listen- what, where has been the secret sauce? Well, you know what? I've been listening to a lot of Gary Vee. Gary Vee. Okay. You okay. ask Gary Vee what to do, and he's like, "Got to post on TikTok three times a day, organic yeah. content." And you know what? I'm tr- I'm trying the I'm trying out the Gary Vee method, and right now it's <laughs> it's it's hidden. I got yeah. a little groove going on. Yeah. Uh, well, you are the graphic gangster, and you're doing yeah. something. So, so yes. this is great though, because you're doing something you love. No. Yes. And showing your skill, and it's fucking blowing up on TikTok. Like. So many people love it. Yeah. So tell, tell them what they're doing. Tell tell everybody what you're doing. Yeah. So my, you know, my, I go home after I put put in some grind time here. I go home and then I just started remaking football helmets. So I think it's one of those things that everyone has an idea of what their football team's helmets like. Ohio State. Yeah. People were like, you should never mess with perfection. This is you can't mess with tradition. Blah blah blah. And it, it, like, hits a little inside of them that, like, because it's different. Like, yeah, they, yeah. they don't want to see it be different. And I'm so I'm just redesigning every school. So I got, like, fucking bunch of high school I kids. I like Tennessee's you did, bro. Yeah, I guess, so I got a bunch of kids, like, do my school, do my school. And it's, like, it's hitting. So I'm just going to keep grinding it out. Dude, what I love is that I saw the Tennessee one that you did, and it looked completely different. And yeah. people were definitely feeling it. And then here's what I'm going to make a prediction. Are you guys ready? TikTok, all you li- all the millions of live viewers, is there's going to be a team that yes. reaches out to Cole to do the actual mock that he makes on TikTok for their school. One hundred percent. That's going to fucking happen. And I think it's going to. I I think it's going to be Ohio State. I think it makes sense because I don't think it's going to be Ohio State. You don't think so? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Cole. I think I believe no, no, in no, you. No, no, no. I no. believe in you, though. No, no, no. Because I think, because I have a lot of Ohio State people following me now, and I came out with this, re- I think, so the two alternates, the first ones I did, they were based off the basketball jerseys, and they were they were pretty out there. So I knew that was going to be a stretch. Yeah. But the last one I just came out with, if I had the chance to pitch it, it would make it 100% because it's red. They just redid the end zone that looks like the Buckeyes mm. like basketball script. This would be the perfect alternate to go along with the new red pants they came out with. I, so I agree that it's good. I'm just don't know yeah. that they would go there just because. But you know what? You know what? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? I feel like if it's going to be someone, it's going to be Cincinnati. So I'm going to make Cincinnati. Helmets. I believe that. I feel like uh, Coach Fick, he's going to go, dog, make her helmets. I like that. I'll be like, yes, sir. <laughs> Trayvon, you've uh, found. We're talking social media right here. You found your way on Twitter. Yeah. So you went, but you kind of went throwback on him with Twitter. What what's been uh, kind of your secret sauce? Because you've been growing on Twitter. Cole's growing on TikTok. You've been growing on Twitter. Talk um, to me. So the sauce is just replying to people, just engaging on Twitter. Just being a dude. Yeah, just being a bro on Twitter. Yeah, yeah being a bro. <laughs> and so yeah, just like replying, engaging with a lot more people on Twitter, and my Twitter following has grown a lot. Like my. I mean, like, my likes and my replies are, like, yeah. getting, like, in the hundreds now, which is, yeah. like, pretty impressive for Twitter. I mean, Baller. so, like, it's, it's uh, and in the NFT space, it seemed like a lot of the OGs have died down. They went quiet because their portfolio is down, but Trey's on the opposite. His is going yeah. up. Oh, and his, yeah, baby. And his followers are going up. Yeah. So, Danny. Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we call this guy Small Arms Dan. If you guys, the millions of viewers here on TikTok, that we're TikTok Live. I know if you guys are listening on audio, you can't yep. see, you can't see it. Danny, what uh, social media content is your? Uh, where is your current growth at? <laughs> My arms. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not a big social media guy. I'm not going to be going live or you know redesigning football helmets. It's not my yeah. in my arsenal here. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> m- mine is just like. Posting dumb shit most of the time on, on Small Arms Danny account. Yeah, yeah. Um, haven't actually done anything. We did have a strategy though. Yeah, we did I, have a strategy somewhat, but uh, we need to, you know, kind of breathe some life into the the Arms Army. However, yes. oh yeah. Um, you know, we're still growing in the Army, even yeah. though we're not really doing anything. Yeah, <laughs> with it. One hundred percent. Um, actually, Cole has designed a pretty cool logo for the Arms Army. Ooh. Yeah, that we need to unveil. At you some haven't point. unveiled it yet. No, yeah. we haven't unveiled it. Kind of uh, based off the the Star Wars, you know, mm-hmm. kind of theme. So okay, it's pretty yeah. wet. I like it. I uh, like it. Yep. Um, I've uh, also had some resurgence in social media, which has been good. Uh, redoing some of the knowledge bombs. 
um, for the new people or just people that have been consuming content from me for a long time. I, can't, I think it's kind of, you know, kind of reminding them a lot of form stuff. Uh, the daily fire clips that uh, Kyle and Trey and all you guys have been pulling that you like, that's been going up or doing really well. Treadway's been helping make sure we get all the content out. Um, I'm feeling more motivated about it because I think now we got like a cadence with the content that I believe can actually teach and help people. So that feels that feels pretty good to kind of be back in that again. Uh, Trey's got something in his throat. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Trey. Yeah. That was too easy. If that was Danny, I would have been all over it. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking oop. Yeah. Oh, that was like a Nerf alley oop yeah. right there. But the um. But so what's cool is, and and I would argue like I think Danny's spot could be within the vlogs. Yes. Because we just saw, you know, for you guys that um, aren't aware, we restarted the Max Effort vlog. First one just went up on YouTube. It's like 17 to 20 minutes. Like, it showcases the training, us meeting, more tra- – like, all kinds of stuff. And uh, I think it's really, really interesting. But it also shows, like, how fun our business meetings are. Yeah. Because we literally just <laughs> captured us being ridiculous, and part of us being ridiculous is Danny. I mean, I'm pretty much the peanut gallery, the, the <laughs> all-time peanut gallery with the yeah. side comments. So I'm like the random guy that's like the fourth supporting actor in the movie. That's me, pretty much. You're the yeah. you're the 15 year old guy humor. Yeah, pretty constantly. Much. Yeah, and the movie references. Yeah, basically the movies from like 2008 to 2012. <laughs> that's me, <laughs> through and through. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Is that the Beavis and Butthead one? Is that what it oh, is? Oh, I love. Yeah, dude, I love Beavis and Butthead. I know you know that one. Yes, man. of course. That's that's old. That's my that's my uh, shit. For all sure. right. So since we're talking social media, you're like the social media like OG. Yeah. So let's talk about from whenever social media first started to now your experience with like TikTok and just how even people consume content, your mm. thoughts on making content, everything like that. Well, it's first off, it's wildly different than one, it was. One million percent. Well. There wasn't, here's the thing, there wasn't as many content producers uh, back then. So I was like, you know, obviously there was like not as saturated. On top of it, I think people were so excited for content because there was shit happening and they were learning that there wasn't as much haterism. Yeah. That's what I think is interesting is that I'm never going to tear another person down for trying. Like, even if I dislike what you're saying, I'm not going to go out of my way, but I've never been that kind of guy anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the thing that's the most, like, weird for me is, like, and that's why I think the younger kids are scared to step out and do content because they know they're going to get filleted. (laughs) Motherfucker, I don't care. I've been confident for 20 plus. Like, I don't, I mean, to me it's okay, but still it's one of those things where now I understand it because now that I'm consuming a lot of the younger demo content, I'm like, oh, okay, now this makes sense to me. Even with you guys, like up to 25, like not wanting to post a bunch on Instagram and then starting to like, and you said it the other day, you're like, I put my shades on like I'm fucking invincible. Well, why do you think that? Because yeah. you're, it's not in a bad way, but it's like you're, you're almost like able to go into character, right? That's my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So my thing is, is that, and I, and I have a, I'm always kind of a character, but the reality is, is that. That's what feels that way because of how it operates. When you shouldn't care, if you're creating smart content that can help people, fuck what these motherfuckers think. And they don't know more than me. Motherfucker, I've been doing this for longer than they've been alive. So when they come up on here, I'm like, this shit is funny to me. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that's what's taken away from younger content producers because they're scared of that. And they shouldn't be scared of that. And so that's what I think is interesting is like, why do we think it's okay? And I'm going to tell you why. If I would have walked up to a motherfucker in my gym and said, hey, dude, who's been doing it for 20 years, that's way more fucking jacked than me, that fucking ain't right, you suck. You know what he would have done? He'd have punched me in the fucking face. (laughs) And then I would have said, you know what? I don't think I'm that fucking cool anymore, and I wouldn't have keyboard warriored him anymore. There's no consequence to people talking shit, and that's the problem. So it's like... Because of the world we live in, and I'm going to sound old, but I like being this old guy because I have the perspective of pre-social media, and I made money off social media, on social media, and both. So I think it's like, it's interesting for me, and I'm, I'm digging in right now because yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like oh, okay, well, you know. So. Well, I mean, even with my experience in social media, I would say I'm like, I'm on the younger side of like I was right in the beginning of whenever Twitter became popular whenever Instagram was a thing like pre like v1 of Instagram stuff like that so watching how every platform's evolved 
Like Twitter's Twitter went from a stance of you could tweet out whatever you want to now it's like it's more like pinpointed. Like you actually got to mm-hmm. think about where you're tweeting. Then Instagram is just literally sharing memes, screenshots, whatever, yeah. selfies in the mirror, all that. Now you got to put so much into it, and the platforms has changed where like everyone's using TikTok now, and now with this younger generation, they're literally watching 15 second clips of potentially pointless shit and their attention span is just <laughs> so it's nuts yeah. and they're making like no one uses their actual name if you go in like the tiktok <laughs> comments no one actually uses their name it's all like fucking, because of what i just said yeah and, yeah and they're all like no one knows what the fuck they're doing like blah 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 yeah it's bad so bad it's bad i honestly like I, I think we were talking about this it's just it's like honestly sad to think that this is going to be like the new norm and like kids are going to grow up only watching cl- 15 second clips and their attention span is constantly just scrolling for more. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's I kinda, mean, that's what it, that's it's what's doing. Real. But I'm going against the grain. It's kind of like Vine. Yeah, like, it is. Yeah, it is kind of. Yeah, you're going right. And going and going. Yeah, but that's what that's what the platform. But at least on Vine, they were using like their real like names and stuff like that. Yeah. Like people were making an account like. It was like a different era of social media. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. You know? All I keep thinking about, too, is, like, your social media class that you taught at Columbus State. So good, Shout bro. out Columbus State. Well, um, that right there was a real mm-hmm. eye-opener because when I was asking people to be vulnerable on social media, I didn't realize that was hard. Like, I just have trying to been, like, I think as I've told my story so openly for so long, that is real natural to me. But, okay, I met Nick Sands in there. Nick Sands hardly talks, right? Mm-hmm. I'm telling him to go on his Instagram and talk about like real shit i'm not saying he didn't do it because he did but you could tell like you know once again i think it's people are worried what people are going to think now what happened was is what i knew would happen the opposite of what they thought people reach out and go oh my gosh i can identify with that or i didn't know that about you once again the social media and content creation class was social media is to be social to to like have people learn about you to know like and trust you Mm -hmm. so you can you know potentially either create a relationship with them or get them into your business or whatever it may be and when i was like preaching that stuff the two guys that failed my class they weren't that was the problem the more i think about why they dodged it and didn't want to do it it's because they were scared i wish i would have fucking called them on that because i would have in a heartbeat if i would have thought about it because they were like cool dudes that were like engaged early, but then when I asked them to do real shit, they were like, Trey, cause you're the one to come and capture it with me, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, that. that's that's what I think it was. The more I think about it, it was like they were scared to put themselves out there mm-hmm. when that's the reality of what the class was there to push. So, so with the social media class, like when you taught it, it's been a few years yeah. now mm-hmm. to now, like yeah. what are like one to three things you would potentially change or does anything come to mind? Well, I think that <clears throat> I was, yeah, well, I think I was more from my day of starting in social media I really could do the same thing almost on every platform and I think that's a lot different now Mm -hmm. and I don't think it was it maybe it was early but you could get away with it where I could literally just post the same thing on Twitter that I posted on Facebook that I posted on Instagram and it would just work Mm -hmm. right because there's maybe it's more saturated now to Cole's point you got to be more pinpointed per platform so I think that's probably the one thing and two I would say that People are just consuming dumber shit. I mean, as we've seen over the last several days, it's just the fucking truth. Like, it's just the fucking truth. And though, on the flip side, if you really do something that's very true to you, that never changes. It'll work. Cole's a great example of what's happening to him right now. Trey's a great example of what's happening to him. He's talking about. He's passionate about NFTs. He's showcasing his lifestyle. People are fucking got grabbing onto it. You love fucking football. You would wear a neck roll to the office if one million if you had one. I should buy you one as a present. Actually, I'll try to find. Hey, one. Hey, so I actually did some research. You know they, you know, <laughs> you, know, you know McDavid actually quit producing neck rolls. Really? They don't make them anymore. They don't make. Yeah, they are like. Oh, we can find one somewhere. It, from what you, I, I watched, like a YouTube video because it talked about like what happened to the neck roll, basically. <laughs> Fucking and love that. They said McDavid. I think it was maybe like 2012 or something like that, or did 2015. They think it's bad for your neck? No, I think it was just like this the style of playing no shit like one that. Wore no anymore. one wears them, but but honestly, like Dude, I mean, if you wore one and did those videos, though, I yeah. feel like would that would people? I, well, I should. I so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't take away. That's no, the, there's no way my, it would take my away. My whole my whole thing with my TikTok is is there's two there's two objectives I'm trying to get done. Okay, right? please. So I'm always trying to show my face and talk in it because a lot of people 
if they're designing something, they won't see their face, so I'm trying yeah. to talk to them. So that way, they hear the voice, they recognize me. If they see me out in public, they're like, holy fuck, that's cool. Now, I got to be wearing my glasses because I'm like Flo Rida. <laughs> if I don't have my glasses on, my videos don't do as good. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. And then also, I'm trying to make them as quick as possible so I don't overthink it. Yeah. If I have an idea of something, I'm literally just trying it because with TikTok's algorithm, you have no fucking idea what's going to run. Just hit the button. No idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So That's awesome. Cool. That's, that's like my idea. Danny, are you planning on joining TikTok anytime soon? I, I don't know. Probably just to observe everyone because you guys keep talking about it every day. Well, I've been I've been doing like the some of the office videos. I went around and asked everyone. People actually like small arms. There are there's already a following for small arms on in my TikTok, and I've only done two videos. Yeah, what do we do? I don't even know what it. What were we talking about? I asked you what your favorite sports movie was. Oh, oh yeah, and I yeah. asked you the Notre Dame prediction, and there was yeah. a bunch of comments like, "Like, tell them like Navy's going to beat Notre Dame. Like, ah! Please tell them they can all fall down the stairs." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think the growth that we're experiencing right now and the things that we're seeing happen, um, and just basically forcing Danny to be involved in it. I mean, look at Trey. Look at this. You can't see it right now, but this is what's <laughs> happening. I'm live on TikTok. But I'm showcasing Trey live on something. Are you live? What on are you, Instagram what, live. And, okay, and nice. Trey, so there is so much social media so, happening. Here, hold on, hold on. <laughs> See, you should go live, I'm too. Go live. All and, right. and, I mean, then that's just. Well, here, but also here's the thing. We, we got to adapt to this social media because for a while, Instagram has had the reins. Now Instagram is basically going through a whole shit show of like, we don't know what we want to be. Yeah. Their platform kind of sucks. So we got to adapt. So that's but why I'm on TikTok. That's the thing is, you got to get out here, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. This one, uh, this time we didn't get that many people on the live. <laughs> Last couple times, though, he's I like, kept shutting it down and going back. He's like, there's one person. Yeah, no, yeah, no there was like 300 <laughs> people the first time. We'll give it a few minutes and we'll get back on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm starting to not feel like social media is a – stress or struggle i'm starting to get back into the groove where i'm enjoying it and i feel like the con like the the pattern i got going on right now yeah. is good you started doing the wake your ass up stuff again yeah i did i, mean, I did a couple times this week and a couple of them went really well i don't know if it's an everyday thing or a couple days a week thing i think it's you got to bring back the drip too hard too yeah i know yeah. cole always yeah. talks about that <laughs> yeah with the pre to the dome drip too hard i use the jimmy cooks this that's what that's the name of that song yeah. right yeah i like that song um <laughs> So, but you know what that is, Dan? No. Okay, that's what yeah. I thought. <laughs> Pred predictable when it comes to that it's, stuff, yeah. It's, yeah. it's Andon's favorite rapper, Drake. <laughs> Every time I use it, Drake sucks. <laughs> Every the, 20, <laughs> the 21 Savage songs come on, and it, it, Drake's part, he's like, Drake sucks. I'm like, <laughs> come on, man. Anyway, um, what else? Uh, so, oh, yeah, so what I'm saying is that, you know, it goes in waves. So I've been hot a couple different times, but I feel like shit's go. about to blaze again. And usually when I tell myself half truths lies to my in my subconscious, it usually comes true. What was that? Half what? Half truths kind of lies. Like okay. you're hot, you're getting hot. So like shit's about to get wild. And 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 I think there's a new level that's getting ready to happen <laughs> and it's probably going to be because of my tiktok stardom there you go probably. and and that's one thing that i'm excited about and then as you guys are content creating and we're content creating together yeah. like this thing could absolutely explode and i'm a little concerned i've got to find the right lawyer for our netflix special because if we get the right lawyer which might be schaefer i'm thinking mm -hmm. to negotiate how many people are going to be into this danny <laughs> <laughs> Saying, guys it's think I'm crazy. Good, they good. also thought I was crazy when I said I was going to be a personal trainer and I was a coal miner. Yeah, I mean, we, there are some stars in this building. I can, yeah, I can already <laughs> envision it now. You know, Jesus. like, like we're basically like the Paul brothers, how they have a posse. The the Nelk boys, they have yeah, their posse. That's, we're oh them. We're God. the fucking yoked boys. Yeah, <laughs> we're all going to have like a million plus followers on TikTok. We're going to yes. have a Netflix special. We're all going to be jacked. You I know, mean, that's literally, we're going to be on fuck with. Listen. Trey's gonna have a million on Twitter. Me and you will have a million each on TikTok. 
Danny can ride our yeah. coattails. I'm cool with that. It's fucking funny. And then, <laughs> and, and then, and, and Sorry, then, <laughs> but, but here's the thing. All of our <laughs> dead guys. Is that the guy you just tagging Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every post. <laughs> Every yeah. All, all of our demos are going to be so different, so then we can just yes. like collab with each other while yeah. we're together, and then we just get all of each other's following. So you know, it's kind of like a social media, like social media, like gangbang. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. <laughs> I know, I saw, I saw it, I saw it going there. I will not be involved. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Fuck. But yeah, that'd be true. <laughs> that's what I'm envisioning. I, like I don't, that. I don't shit, know where to go yeah. from there. Yeah. Kyle, is it time for a break? I think you there's know, like seven clips on here that we <laughs> got right, right now. Let's go, to, know, let's go to a commercial break. Yeah, to the break. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Max for Muscle. With us is the Director of Sports Performance, Tyler Treadway. Treadway, take it away. What's up, guys? Thank you for having me. I'm here to tell you about Max Effort Muscle, NSF certified for sport products. So we realized there was a need in the marketplace for a safe, effective product that also tastes really good. We fit the bill. Everything that we say that is in this label is in this label. It is confirmed by this sticker right here. Make sure that there's no ingredients that would make you <clears throat> fail a drug test for any reason. You can take our products. They're safe. They're effective. No matter if you're a jump bro, an Whoa. aspiring jump bro, Jeez. a Keep it going. college athlete, pro athlete, pro team, no matter what, we can service you. We have high schools, college teams, pro teams. Everybody's taking it. Let us know how we can service you. Hey, good job, Treadway. Treadway's wow. getting good, man. You practice that in the mirror? Yeah. <coughs> oh, that was good. You fooled me. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you, Treadway. Back thank to you, the Tyler show. Treadway. All right, Roundtable Podcast, we're back from commercial break. Is it time for Danny Ask a Question? Yes, it is time for everyone's favorite segment of the show. People, we haven't done it in a while. It's been a few weeks because we've been in the studio, but now since we're back out here, we got the commercial break. It's time to bring it back, so here we go. Another segment of Danny Ask a Question. Are we doing a Danny Ask a Question or, or Small Arm Says? Or Small Arm yeah, Says. Yeah, Small Arm Says, Small I mean, Arm it's Says. I'm just yeah, fucking yeah. with you. All right, uh, it's not necessarily a question for each one of you, but uh, it is a quote. Mm. Oh, 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 yeah, that I want each one of you to kind of give your two cents perspective or what comes to mind. All right, so uh, this is from uh, your boy Ryan Holiday. Okay. Big shocker there. Yeah, uh, yeah. shout out Ryan. Yeah, Stoked. shout out. I sent um, you some books. Hopefully yeah. you got them. <laughs> I did. I sent him. I sent him the new book, How to Build Confidence and Win at Life. Just shameless plug. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> shameless. shameless plug. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a pretty quick one. Uh, we are A to Z thinkers, fretting, fretting about A, obsessing over Z yet forgetting all about B through Y. Chew on that for a minute. Yeah, unpack that real quick, Danny. Well, I think, like, we have, like, uh, the way that at least I, I took it was, you know, fretting about A, so uh, that's, like, your starting point for something. Mm -hmm. um, and then Z is the end point. Just Got it. So kind of like, uh, I don't know, when they say obsessing over Z, you're just fixated on that end point, but then you're, like, not even giving your a chance, giving yourself a chance to kind of enjoy the process is kind of like where I was going with it. Okay. So um, I don't know. What do you guys? What do you guys think about that? Because <clears throat> like we always talk about like enjoy the process because like you know you've heard people talk about once they get to the end they kind of feel empty inside and they kind of like yearn for that feeling back again when they're kind of like starving and hungry for more. Yeah. Or well, what happens in almost every case? entrepreneurs sell a big business and then what do they end up doing right back to build another one it's because they miss that part so to the, to your point danny when we started max effort and with the corey g fitness business i'm trying to enjoy that be the enjoyable part it's going to go up it's going to go down it's going to go sideways we'll have challenges we'll have wins we'll have all of those things but enjoying that the camaraderie in the locker room we have especially right in this office small knit group guys it's like that's what I'm going to remember. The car I buy after we sell Max Effort one day or when I retire or the thing that I do is not going to feel the same as us laughing at Danny when he <laughs> we had to force him to do an interview. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Like, it's not going to be the same as whenever you guys have your first big hit like that. Like, for me, like seeing y'all grow up, like, that's the, once again, it's the guys that talk about, if I look at it from a sports standpoint, they talk about those wins and Super Bowls and shit like that, but they really talk about the locker room. Every athlete I've talked about is they miss that. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that's one thing I'm trying to be more present of present of this time around in business is that I got the setup that I've always dreamed of. This is authentic all the way till the to the lowest highest level all angles. Like what else is there mm-hmm. for me? I want to excel and push things, but the reality is when I drive here every day, this is exactly how I saw it in my head. Mm-hmm. So why am I rushing to do anything else except for just make this as good as possible or great? You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> and so I think I used to think something else, not necessarily about this business, but in general, that there was a different fairy tale in my head. But I got to realize I wouldn't be now. I might want to work less as I get older. I get that. But I still doesn't change what happens in the morning at 4 a.m. It still doesn't change what we do in the office of how much I enjoy it and want to be here. Like, I just don't, I, I'm trying to stay present in that because yeah. I think <clears throat> grass can be greener. Oh, what happens if somebody comes and buys us for 20 fucking million, blah, 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 blah. I think that would be great. I just don't know how much my life's really going to change. Mm-hmm. I'm probably still going to get up the next day and lift weights. I'm probably still going to talk to people about how to take creatine. I'm still going to do a lot of the same things I do anyway. Yeah. So I, I think I had that realization. Now, that's easy for people to look at and say, oh, well, gee, you already done all this stuff. So it's easy. But I have perspective on it that when you're in it, good, bad, or indifferent, you're in it and it's something you want to build, you're excited about. Like, that's the situation we got here. We got our own fitness fantasy factory, basically. Like, look what we're doing right now. This morning, we trained at 4 a.m. Trey ca- captured it. And great bench yesterday, by the way. 300 on a board press. Super proud of that guy. And then today, Jeff. you know, we had Flex Friday. We kill it. I go home, I lunge, I come back, we do jump bros. Now we're recording this. We're talking about the deal that we're going to rock for the weekend. There's some great athletes out here training with us. And, like, you know, guys were doing the fucking ice barrel in the sauna when I rolled up today. Like, I don't know, like, how much better can we really make it? Or can we just make it? Like, even if it gets bigger, I don't know if the interaction gets better. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's something I, I'm trying to really stay like on to, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, like Hormo- I, the podcast you were just talking about with yeah. Hormozy and Ed, whatever his Milet is. Milet, yep. Yeah, they, they were kind of talking about um, kind of like the, the the process or whatever, or like if they experience any like gaps in like motivation or whatever. Like when no, I no, mean, I, I, Alex, I locked onto that part big time. Yeah, because like you know Hormozy was talking about like his like sole motivation was to basically prove his dad wrong. Correct. Which. I mean, could be very powerful, but also potentially destructive oh, long term, yeah. obviously. And then the but chip like, on your shoulder is necessary. Yeah, and sure. then it and then it kind of snowballed into talking about MJ yep. na- naturally. But like, I mean, you guys have all heard it before. But like, when he talks about like what his inspiration, motivation, whatever you want to call it, is when he's you know he's in Phoenix or something <laughs> like that on a random like Tuesday night plan, and he's like. Why wouldn't I give my all, especially when you have, like, a kid in the stands that's only going to see him one time? Yeah, paid, that paid yeah. all of the family money to be there. Exactly. And he has to perform. Mm-hmm. So what I locked on about that part of the podcast is <clears throat> the things that I was able to achieve, I thought I could achieve, but I didn't know if I really could achieve, right? Once again, kind of to the point early in the podcast where I was telling myself all those things. Then when you get there, well, first off, what's enough? That's going to be a question. Uh, me and John Yoles actually talk about this a lot. I, I don't know. He got a lot. So I don't know. Like what, But it's still that point of, and this is, comes back to what I just talked about, about how great this is. Like, what is enough? Could we have a bigger building and a nicer this? And that, you know what I mean? Like, it can all, there's never like a, there's never a finish line. So with that, I can identify because I got to a certain level in my career that I probably didn't even think I could actually get to, but I told myself I wanted to. And, and even when I got to the spot I could conceptualize and I went way past it, mm-hmm. you know, um, then your motivation is a little bit weird because you're like, okay, <clears throat> I proved the people wrong. I, I've, I did these things. What's still going to move the needle for me? Then it became more lifestyle. I didn't really like my lifestyle. Like I didn't want to, yeah. I was playing kind of corporate stuff at that point because MP, I got so big. And then the way I was moving from multiple different places, like it became more of a lifestyle and quality of life thing, mm-hmm. not really a money thing or a prove them wrong thing anymore. But I, I've always worked really well with anger, fear. Like I'm, I'm scared. I don't want to fucking it not to work. I'm angry because people doubted me. Like, but you can only use that stuff for so long when it mm-hmm. actually works. 
It's a short and so fuse. It's yeah. a little, but I mean, it lasted a really long time yeah. for me, but that is a, a very interesting thing. So you get to a certain point and you're like, oh, this is cool, but there's so many more levels, but then it's like, what's, what's enough? Yeah. And that, sure. that was something I locked onto that because I was like, I'm at a weird spot in my career where I'm just trying to really focus on the things I talked about earlier because it is so good mm -hmm. and that to not really be super worried about, I don't know, some of that other stuff. But it's, it's, a, tr it's a tricky one because I don't get up every day thinking, I, I'll do more like what MJ does, this motherfucker. He, I just want him to, I know he hates on me, like, fuck him. <laughs> like, I want him to get up and think, man, not that motherfucker again. Like, that does yeah. still kind of, is kind of fun for me. But I didn't That's just kind of part of you, though. I didn't already proved all them people wrong anyway, yeah. and I keep doing it. So that's not really my main motivation. So that part of the podcast, for me, actually rang a lot true because I'm trying to figure that all the way out a little bit still. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly quality of life, though, I think. Yeah. Which is anybody can learn from, I think. For sure. Well, I don't know. Cool, Trey. Connie, will you I'm rambling a lot. Sorry, yeah, guys. Will you repeat that again? The the quote yeah. itself? Yeah, one sec. Uh, we are A to Z thinkers, fretting about A, obsessing over Z, yet forgetting all about B through Y. I'm, I'll go ahead. So, like, um, so like when I hear that quote, like, my perspective is a little bit different than yours. So, like, what I, like, think of when I hear that quote is that, like, along, like, the journey or whatever. <laughs> I hate using the word yeah. journey. <laughs> I, like, process. Along, like, yeah, along, yeah, process. There along, we go. Along, like, the process and stuff like that. Like, there's so many, like, opportunities and stuff like that and that come up in, like, people's lives that, like, people don't necessarily, like, see, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, like, just being, like, open-mindedness and having, like, the awareness of, like, different things that come up throughout life. Like, there might be something come up that seems so small at the moment, but really, though, like, it, like, flourish into something, like, bigger. And so, like... I feel like people will get stuck on like one goal necessarily, you know what I mean? Like it might be like one or two things and that's the only things mm -hmm. that they're like, you know, like that's the only things that they're like really spending all their time on and all the, like their attention and they don't even notice like mm -hmm. the other things going on around them. Well, if that's the case, then I would have only been a gym owner. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I realized like that that wasn't probably it for me. That I think I got into that so early that I was like, all right, that's part of it. Like, mm -hmm. there's something else I really like to do. And surprisingly, it was like, not surprisingly, but I was really into supplements and nutrition. And I just saw, like, maybe this is really where my path is at. I, I'm going to be a gym owner. I'm a gym guy. That's not going to change. But Corey G ultimately still, I think, will be known as a trainer. But the reality is it really was through supplements if we really have to put mm -hmm. it together. And it, that's not something I anticipated at all. But I couldn't deny it when I started messing with it. I was like, man, I really like this stuff. And because the guy's taking drugs, like I can, I can still fuck with these guys if I do this part right, if I do these supplements right. And so instead of going, uh, you know, personal training's working, this is what I do, I, I, I took that hard left and said like, hey, I'm gonna give all these guys away and I'm going to go this route. Yeah, and that, yeah. that was a, that was a pretty tricky because Ray was pregnant with Madeline, already had AG, and, you know, like I was making good money but not crazy money. So that, But I but I couldn't deny it, though. So, yeah, that's that's good. I think that's good advice, Trey. Real good advice. I'm going to go kind of off Trey, too. I think people underestimate how much B, C, D, E, and F, like, takes to even get close to Z. Because especially, <laughs> especially with yeah. – like just in our experience, like the NFT project, we we know we want to start start the NFT project. We know how great we want it to be, but now you got to go to now we got to fucking make the website. You got to make the Discord. Got to make all the merch. Got to think about the utility. Got to think about all these different things. Got to be active as fuck on social active media. as fuck. Yeah, social and then media. the social media is a whole thing. So there's so many different steps that all take so much time that it just it just takes way fucking longer than you expect and there's a million different things and like the whole scene the industry can fucking change which mm -hmm. like we kind of went through so yeah i would say everything takes twice as long as people think and usually costs twice as much that's facts <laughs> <laughs> that's what i've I'm sorry i just spit on you that's what no, i've noticed cool. over time at least i think like what todd did <laughs> for you guys that don't oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is that amazing was a bad <laughs> and i i feel like i need to talk about yeah. i wish we had a, i wish we had uh footage yeah, I'm glad we don't. Todd Dunkel. <laughs> Todd Dunkel. Very sweaty old man. Old he's a grinder, man. though. He's, he's a grinder. He's shout work. out Todd. Work. No free shout outs. It didn't come free because he's worked hard. My longest standing 4 a.m. crew, you know, training partner, was spotting Cole Susak. And there was mm -hmm. a very bad thing that happened. <laughs> yeah. Where in slow motion, a bead. Huge bead of sweat. 
as he's spotting Cole goes right in his mouth. It was literally hit me right on the lips. You can check that box. <laughs> <laughs> it started me. And Cole what gets up and goes like this. He goes, just walk away, Todd. Just walk <laughs> like, away. Because <laughs> we were benching, I think. Uh, we were doing, we were doing like, says a three or something like that through black bands. Anyways, yeah, it, it was, was a lot of fuck, It was a lot of fucking weight. And Todd, <laughs> as soon as he unracks it, and I go down. So I'm benching, and the bar's on my chest. I just feel a, a drop of sweat <laughs> hit me right in the lips. I instantly like look away, and I press it up. And I just get up, and I'm like... <laughs> I'm like Todd. You're done. You're done for the day. <laughs> <laughs> I, told, I told him to walk out. Get out. That's yeah. so good. So, Jeez. It's all right. Don't. We know that's what. It's okay. Walk yeah. out. Walk out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, I had a. It wasn't nearly as bad as that, but I was spotting one of my high school kids. I think Kyle caught it, and he was like basically bent over with the fucking front squat. And I got close to spot him because I thought, it, and he fucking corrected his form, and the oh, fucking shit. plate hit me right in the fucking eye. <laughs> I thought it cut me because it hit me right on this bone. I, so I'm gonna have a half a shiner. But I was like, bang, like caught it like that. I was like, damn, it's almost like Jake Holland. Like you get too close to the bar, and he's so yeah. tall, it yeah. comes out and fucking you almost get hit in the chin. <laughs> so I got fucking eye checked by a fucking plate yesterday. That was awesome. <laughs> um, not as bad as you know, eating Todd's sweat, but yeah, that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? I think this is a good episode. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty fiery. You want, you want to do dog of the week? Yeah, please. Oh, right, yeah. New segment, new segment. So I think uh, now since football season is back, uh, I'm going to have a dog of the week. So basically this is someone who in, like, uh, represents what a dog is. It might be college, might be NFL. Okay. But this week starting out, Hard Knocks is out. Yes. And my first official dog of the week is the head coach of the Detroit Lions, Dan Campbell. Shout out, Dan Absolute Campbell. Absolute fucking electric. If you haven't watched Hard Knocks, it is amazing. Yeah. Like, the way he talks, he's got like, yeah, man, we're going to do all this, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. And he's blue collar as fuck, and I would run through a brick wall head yeah, first for I that guy. Yeah, I fuck with Dan Campbell. I watched uh, the Pivot Podcast. Shout out to those guys. Uh, they had Jared Goff on, mm. and he talked about Dan a good bit. And he talked about Aiden Hutchinson, about him singing Billie Jean. Yeah. That hadn't went out yet, but it's, like, going viral everywhere. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, the, the, hard, the first Hard Knocks episode is really good. Dan Campbell uh, – so I guess he does up downs with the practice, like the with the team every day. That. So he fucking uh, like they That's have a clip of awesome. him doing forty up downs right at the beginning of practice with the head coach. That's like why I fuck with Vrabel too. Yeah, Vrabel's yeah. out there pregame doing push ups and squats. <laughs> yeah, like I fuck with that. So so good. Yeah. All right. Well, shit. Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy Corey G. Small arms Danny at Trace. Beat in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Brought to you by MaxSupperMuscle.com. We're out.